tech industry from last 16 years if i talk about my last 7 years i am working on hadu atlas hive pig scoop spark scala etc and along with working on this technology we are providing the online training to the working professionals like you and the college students who are uh, just planning to start their career and they want to choose the red hot technology the technology which is in demand and which is uh, trending nowadays so now we will be starting with introduction to big data so let's start uh, this uh, demo with a uh, agenda and then we'll keep on exploring all these uh, points in uh, much more detail so the agenda is uh, internet in real time what is hadoop master slave architecture hadoop distributed file system you can call it as hdfs map reduce hadoop services what is big data why hadoop is important for career prerequisites to learn hadoop and hadoop training details this is the agenda uh, for this hadoop demo class so we'll uh, explore all these points one by one in much more detail so let's start with first one that is internet in real time nowadays every single device whether it's your mobile phone smartphone laptop television every single device is connected with internet and that simply means that those devices are generating the data even in our daily life starting from early morning till late night we are doing a lot of things over internet we are part of facebook linkedin twitter so we are doing a lot of activities over there we are purchasing the online products from ebay amazon flipkart apart from that we are using google for searching something we are using youtube for watching videos and there are many more things which we use throughout the day over internet just to give you an idea how much of data is being generated over internet i have taken this screenshot this screenshot is taken from a website which displays the uses of internet in real time you can uh, look at the bottom of this uh, screenshot it is saying by the way in the 5 seconds you have been on this page approximately 112870 gb of data was transferred over the internet. can you imagine just 5 seconds of time has generated 112870 gb of data and if you want detail you can have a look let's start with left upper corner in this 5 seconds 55 new accounts are created and 28500 new tweets are there youtube 11570 video hours are watched and 10 video hours were uploaded linkedin 910 user searches skype these many uh, millions of uh, calls similarly we have the stats for instagram google amazon app store play store and facebook these many likes these many posts and 30 gb of data whatsapp 60 new accounts are created and millions of messages are sent the interesting part is that all these stats are just for 5 seconds if 5 seconds of time can generate this much of data then think about the data size which will be generated in one hour one day one month or maybe last 5 years that simply means that gone are the days when we were dealing with mb or gb of data nowadays we are dealing in terabytes and petabytes of data and to deal with terabytes and petabytes of data your traditional approach microsoft sql server or uh, teradata or any other technology which you might have used or might have uh, read in your uh, college time those technologies are not sufficient to deal with large amount of data so to deal with large amount of data with today's internet speed we need a new technology and that is hadoop so what hadoop is we'll try to explore this hadoop is an apache product apache is the company which is 
are developing this uh, technology so we can go to apache website and we can download hadoop free of cost because hadoop is an open source framework free of cost you can download and you can use it for your personal use or maybe for your enterprise purpose for your company purpose now hadoop provides you distributed storage and distributed processing to make it simple because uh if you are coming uh, from a college and uh, just just done your graduate and now you are planning to start your career in it you may not be having idea about many technical terminology so let's make it less technical let's uh, start with some very basic normal human being language so that any even any non technical guy can understand that so to explain that i will take a uh, i would take a small example that suppose there is a school in that school there is a principal and there are 10 teachers now there is a task the task is checking of 1000 answer sheet of the students now the challenge is that if a principal himself or herself will try to check those 1000 answer sheet it will take a lot of time because it's a big task checking 1000 answer sheet is definitely a big task in that case the alternate approach is that principal can distribute the task among 10 teachers now those 1000 answer sheet will be checked by those 10 teachers that means one teacher is responsible for checking only 100 answer sheet i think that's quite a interesting and quite old uh, mathematical formula right it's nothing new more number of worker will be completing your task in less amount of time and the vice versa if less number of people are there they will take much more time to complete the job same funda is applicable to hadoop when you are dealing with the terabytes and petabytes of data in that case depending upon a single system is not a good idea instead if i have multiple system i have 10 system or 20 or 50 i can distribute my storage among all machines and similarly i can distribute my processing among all the machines that means when i have a large amount of data instead of overloading a single system we will split that data into multiple smaller parts and store them on multiple machines this was about storage similarly about processing when i want to process the large amount of data instead of overloading a single system i will execute a job which will run parallelly on multiple machines and hence i will get my output in less amount of time. So this was the concept of distributed storage and distributed processing. And with the help of this a distributed nature, we can deal with large amount of data very easily. Because number of machines, when I say ten or twenty or fifty, that's not a fixed number. It varies from requirement to requirement. Whatever your requirement is and how much of data you are planning to deal with, accordingly you can have many machines. in your cluster so this is very brief what uh, what is hadoop in upcoming slide we'll explore this uh, storage part distributed storage part and distributed processing part in much more detail so let's start with architecture of uh, master and slave if i talk about that school example principal was the master and teachers were the slave because master was a principal was not checking the answer sheet by himself instead he was distributing the task among multiple teachers so principal can be considered as controller or you can say master and other all teachers who are actually doing the task you can call them as workers or slave so even in hadoop we have a master slave architecture as you can see this so we have a master machine we have a secondary master just like in school we have a vice principal if principal is absent there must be vice principal who can take care of the activities right apart from master and secondary master we have multiple slaves just like multiple teachers and this complete set master plus secondary master plus multiple slaves 
this complete set is a Hadoop cluster. One more thing you can notice here is that user is interacting with master machine only. Suppose user uh, is interested to store a big file, he won't be talking to multiple slaves. No. User is required to interact with master only. User will interact with master and will request that this is my big file. I want to store it on multiple machines. After that, it's master machine's duty to split that file into multiple smaller parts and then storing them distributively on multiple machines. So this is master slave architecture. Now the storage part, basically distributed storage and distributed processing, those things we will be exploring. So let's start with storage part. The complete uh, name is Hadoop Distributed File System. In short, you can call it as HDFS. Till previous slide, I was using very general terminology like master machine or secondary master or slave. But in Hadoop technology, in Hadoop terminology, your master machine is known as name node. So when you say this name node is nothing but your master machine. We have a backup node. That's nothing but my backup of master. You can say secondary master. And all five below machines are data nodes. Data nodes means slave machines. This is a Hadoop cluster of seven machines. One master, one backup master and five slaves. This dotted arrow indicates that name node is controlling or you can say name node is giving instructions to data nodes. Now let's talk about these colorful blocks which are, are displayed on the left side. These colorful blocks are nothing but part of a big file. The file was too big to be stored on a single system. So what Hadoop has done, Hadoop has separated that file into multiple smaller parts. And those multiple smaller parts are easily stored distributively on multiple machines. As you can see that we are not overloading a single system. Those multiple parts, instead of storing them on a single system, what we have done is we have distributed them among multiple systems so that multiple machines are participating in the storage. This is your distributed storage. The storage part of Hadoop. Now let's talk about distributed processing because when my data is not stored on a single system, my data is stored on multiple machine. I need a special technique which can process my data parallelly on multiple machines. Then only I will be able to complete my processing in less amount of time. Right. So let's move to the next slide and we'll talk about uh, MapReduce. MapReduce is nothing but the technical terminology of distributed processing. In simple layman language, I was saying distributed processing. In technical Hadoop terminology, you can say MapReduce. So first of all, MapReduce plays a key role in a Hadoop framework. Why it's playing the key role and why the storage part was not playing the key role. Storage nowadays is not a big deal. You can have a portable hard disk of two terabyte. It's not a big deal. You can store your data on Google Drive, on Dropbox, and there are many cloud storage solution available. So storing the large amount of data is not a big thing, big thing. But yes, processing that large amount of data will definitely big thing and that needs your resources. Nowadays, when you logging into suppose Amazon and you are searching for some smartphone, you browse for 15 minutes and you checked the detail of a smartphone, but you did not purchase it. That's absolutely fine. But half an hour later, when you were visiting Facebook, Facebook will be displaying the same advertisement of the same smartphone from Amazon. Is there any magic? How does Facebook know that I was looking for that smartphone and I browsed for that smartphone on Amazon a few minutes back? How does it know? All these things is magic of analytics. Depending upon the activity you do over internet, the things are recommended to you because that can make your mind. You are already in the mood of purchasing something. You are simply checking the details on different website. Suddenly you will see the advertisement again on Facebook. 
it's likely that you may click on that advertisement and if you will click on that it will take you to the amazon website and you may make your mind if that is the case that simply means that facebook will be getting the benefit from its advertisement delivery that's why processing is more important than storage so mapreduce is a programming model for writing application that rapidly process large amount of data as i told you i need a special technique which can run parallelly because my data is not stored on a single system it's distributedly stored on multiple system i need a distributed technology which can process something on multiple machines and that is mapreduce in order to understand mapreduce because mapreduce consists of two things map and reduce or right, you can say mapper and reducer in order to understand these two terminology in detail i will take you back to the school example and let me remind you that the principle was distributing the task of checking thousand answer sheet among 10 teachers that means each teacher is responsible for checking 100 answer sheets right now what will happen is now every teacher will be checking 100 answer sheet independently without bothering about any other teacher first teacher checking 100 answer sheet and preparing the result for those 100 students that's all second teacher taking the next 100 uh, uh, answer sheets and preparing the result for those next 100 students and similarly all remaining teachers it's a good approach multiple teachers can definitely complete my task in less amount of time but the challenge is that those 10 teachers will be preparing 10 small results that's a challenge i don't want 10 different results as a principal i want only one result what can be done now now principal can choose one teacher that could you please collect the small results from each teacher and consolidate that into a single unit that is something i am looking for so the initial individual activity every teacher was doing checking 100 answer sheet that activity is known as method and the last activity one teacher was collecting the small result from other teachers and preparing the combined result consolidating the smaller result to create a bigger result that consolidation activity is known as addition that was the example was in the context of school so that it is easier for you to understand let's convert this example to hadoop as a user you submitted a job to master machine and master machine distributed the job among multiple slaves now each slave is doing its part independently the independent processing every slave machine is doing is known as mapper and finally one machine chosen by master master will choose one slave that you have to do the consolidation part that part of the system will be fetching the intermediate result from all other machines consolidating that into single unit and that would be ultimately the final output that consolidation activity is known as reducer so that was the simplest explanation to make it easier for you to understand what mapper is and what reducer is if you want some definition type of thing it's there on the slide mapper processes input data independently on multiple machines to generate intermediate output data because whatever mapper will produce it's not the final output it's intermediate output and then reducer will be fetching intermediate output from all mappers and generate final output data so this is uh, about the distributed processing part of hadoop in simple words you can say map it is so moving to the next slide hadoop services when we install hadoop on our system today's demo class so we are explaining only theoretical concepts but once you will join the training program the very first thing we will do is installing hadoop on your system because when we keep on reading the subjects in our classroom we uh, read the subjects but that does not make our concept clear when we go to the lab when we do the things practically then only the concept will be clear the same thing we will do 
we will be installing hadoop on your system so that whatever things we explore we explain during our classes we do that practically and you should also try doing that practically on your system so once you will install hadoop there will be few services running on your system so let's talk about those services the first two services are name node and data node few slides back i was saying that name node is nothing but master machine and data nodes are nothing but slave machines right but name node and data node are actually services name node is a master service which is running on master machine and that's why we call the master machine as name node. similarly data node is a service which is running on every slave machine and that's why every slave machine is known as data node so name node and data node both services are taking care of storage part of your hadoop the hdfs part similarly we have two more services job tracker and task tracker job tracker runs on master machine and task tracker runs on every slave machine and both job tracker and task tracker are taking care of processing part of hadoop that is your map reduce part of hadoop so these are few services which are running on different systems on hadoop cluster for better clarity you can have a look at this diagram the central box is my master machine on which name node and job tracker services are running name node is running for storage service and job tracker is running for processing purpose along with master we have a secondary name node and in case of uh, failure if master machine is down there should be some backup for that and that is my secondary name node. <clears throat> apart from master and uh, its backup if you will come down below these are my five slaves and on every slave data node and task tracker services are running which are both slave services name node is interacting with all the data node services and taking care of storage part collectively similarly job tracker is interacting with the task trackers and taking care of map reduce part collectively these are the different services running on master secondary master and slave machines of hadoop cluster so these are the hadoop services which will be running on our system once we will be installing hadoop let's move to the next slide the next is what is big data when you talk to someone or when you are uh, discussing the career opportunity with your friends with your seniors with your um, other other professionals who are already working in it so they may be using two terminology hadoop and big data here the point is are the same hadoop and big data or they are different or they are interrelated so we'll compare both but before that let's try to understand what big data is so big data is story of three v's and those three v's are volume velocity and variety volume of data i think you have seen on very uh, first slide when we were talking about how much of data is being generated 1 lakh few thousand few hundred gb of data just in 5 seconds so volume is very high velocity that terabytes and petabytes of data was generated just in 5 seconds you can imagine the speed of data by which data is coming into our system and finally variety we have audio data video data images snaps transactional data whatsapp messages social networking facebook linkedin twitter many more things. if i combine on combine all this thing data complexity is very high these three things volume velocity and variety makes my data very very complex and to deal with that complex data only hadoop is not sufficient you know why because hadoop is a base technology hadoop provides a base for other technology so once your base is ready we can think about other technologies or we can even call them sub technologies because those are 
ultimately dependent upon hadoop so those are some technology i have listed few hbase hive peg scoop spark scala and nowadays if you are jumping into big data world you should learn this sub technology as well because in every project along with hadoop there will be few more sub technology involved although there are many more technology available under big data but these are the most important one which are used in it industry day by day on daily basis so if we learn hadoop that's the base once our base is strong then we'll talk about this technology and then we are in a better position we are in a stronger position that we can uh, go for any hadoop and its related technologies enterprise now coming to the point of difference what's the difference between hadoop and big data so when you say hadoop that means only and only hadoop but when you say big data that consists of hadoop plus hbase high Fig, Scoop, Spark, Scala, etc. That's the difference between Hadoop and Big Data. So in the beginning, when I was introducing myself, I was saying that I am working on Hadoop, HBase, Hive, Fig, Scoop, etc. To make it simple, I can say I am working on Big Data. That's all. Big Data means Hadoop plus its related technology, which are used in analysis of the a large amount of data. So this is uh, what is big data. Moving to the next slide, why Hadoop is important for career. The people who are already working in IT for last five years, seven years, ten years, they are jumping into Hadoop. The people who are just doing their graduate, even they are aware that Hadoop is something which is uh, very famous nowadays. They are planning to start their career in Hadoop itself. But why? There must be something interesting in Hadoop, right? That's why people are running towards it. So let's try to understand why really Hadoop is important for career. The very first reason is better salary, and there is no doubt on that. If you will compare the billing rate or the package of a Hadoop guy with any other technology, you will find it on higher side. That's one of the reasons. The technology which in demand, which is being used. Nowadays in the company, you will definitely prepare yourself. Second point is, big companies are hiring. I was saying that when a new technology comes in the market, then there are many questions coming in our mind. We think that whether this technology will be used in future or not. Today we are using it; that's fine. But tomorrow, if I switch my job, whether the new organization will use Hadoop or not, right? But all these questions do not make any sense for Hadoop. You know why? Because very big companies are involved in this. I was talking about Amazon, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google. All the big companies, all the big organizations, which have large amount of data, all the banks, all the e-commerce, all the social networking, all these are involved in big data. And when these big technology are involved in all this stuff, there is no doubt on the scope of this technology. that means there is quite bright future of this technology in upcoming years the next is globally available if i talk about facebook linkedin twitter amazon flipkart these things are not limited to a particular locality these are globally available in every country every locality that's why even the opportunity for hadoop is also globally available you can get the job opportunity across all the and finally if you are learning this new technology that means better job opportunities are waiting for you so this is why hadoop is important for career moving to the next slide what are the prerequisites to learn hadoop what are the prerequisite hardware wise do i need to purchase any new laptop from the market and if yes then what should be the configuration second thing is software wise from where i will get the software and finally apart from your hardware and software we talk about the operating system so let's talk about all these things 
the very first and the most important prerequisite is Linux based operating system that can be Mac OS, that can be Red Hat, or that can be Ubuntu. Windows is not made for Hadoop. We all are habitual of using Windows because that's the operating system which is easily available and very famous across the globe. Even every any uh, 10th class guy or even below uh, below 10th standard can very easily use Windows. That's globally accepted operating system. Unfortunately, you cannot install Hadoop on Windows. In that case, we should do one thing. We would need one Linux based operating system. That can be Mac OS, that can be Red Hat, or that can be Ubuntu. Why I have highlighted Ubuntu in a different color? Because Ubuntu is a free of cost available, first of all. It's an open source. You can download it from uh, internet and you can use it for installing uh, Ubuntu on your system without disturbing your Windows. Windows will be there as it is. On top of Windows, we'll be installing VirtualBox. And inside VirtualBox, we will be installing Ubuntu so that we can use our Windows without any issue. And at the same time, we can use the Ubuntu for our Hadoop related practicals. So there's nothing to worry about. We are here to uh, understand and to make you understand how to install Ubuntu on your personal desktop or maybe personal laptop. The next is Java 8 or higher version. Are we talking about Java knowledge? Have you done your graduate in Java in computer science or in mechanical or in electronics? But that does not matter. We are not talking about Java knowledge. Instead, we are talking about the Java software, which will be required for running of Hadoop. That is Java 8 or higher version. Disk space is required to hold the large amount of data. And RAM is required to process the large amount of data. And the beauty of Hadoop is there is no minimum required configuration. Whatever minimum configuration you have for hard drive and whatever minimum configuration you have for RAM, that's good. That's absolutely fine. They can deal with any size, any type of data. Apart from uh, this, we would need a group of computers. In our previous slides, there was uh, one master machine, one slave, and uh, sorry, one secondary master and multiple slaves. So, do we really need those many systems for learning how to? No, that's not required. Because logically, my personal laptop or my personal desktop can work as a master as well as slave. Logically, it's possible. You can send an email from your email address to your email address because you are the sender and you are the receiver. You can behave as a both sender and receiver similarly our system can behave as a both master machine as well as slave machine and that's why we can install hadoop even on single system without any issue without any doubt so these are the prerequisite and you can see hardware wise no need to purchase anything new whatever pc or laptop you have we can use that software wise simply go to budget website download it use it that's all it's completely in our reach. So this was the prerequisite. Now moving to the last slide for the day. Hadoop training details. So there are two types of Hadoop training. One is Hadoop developer, which needs prior Java knowledge. The guys who have done their uh, graduate in computer science or uh, IT, they can very easily go with Hadoop developer profile because it need little bit of Java knowledge. The guys who are coming from Java background, they can easily go with this. But another and the most famous profile is Hadoop admin. The best part is it does not need any Java knowledge. That means anyone is coming from electronics background. That's fine. Electronics background guy can definitely go for admin, Hadoop admin. So suitable for guys who are coming from database, data warehousing, informatica, mainframe, business intelligence. QA or known IT background, or you can say freshers who does not have any experience. They can easily go with the Hadoop admin profile. And as a fresher, when you just came from your office, you should be uh, flexible enough to learn both Hadoop admin come developer because this technology came three, four years back 
and nowadays the more demand is for hadoop admin come develop if you know a little bit of java or if you can learn a little bit of java you can work as a developer and since admin does not need any java knowledge you can definitely work as admin so it gives you more opportunity it will add some value to your resume if you can work as an admin come developer okay the training program which we will conduct is hadoop admin plus hadoop developer plus hbase hive fig scoop spark scala and poc many more things are there poc is proof of concept whatever things we will talk about about this technology about this sub technology by combining them we will be doing a mini project in our last week that is known as poc proof of concept apart from hadoop developer any other thing that is hadoop admin plus all the sub technology plus poc these things does not need any java knowledge only few classes which we will be conducting for hadoop developer will be needing java so these are the technical details the non technical details about our training program is training duration is 5 weeks and those are 5 days a week monday to friday morning india time so that it does not affect your daily schedule if you are working or planning to uh, start working shortly in that case you can go to your office by 9 am or by 10 am we conduct the classes in india morning time if someone is joining from us some people of course just done their masters in us even they are uh, planning to learn hadoop they can attend the training program in evening time evening us time sunday to thursday evening so these are the uh, technical on and the non technical detail about our training program global technology leader in providing it consulting software development end to end solution and manage services to various client globally this is our address in uh, hyderabad and we provide all these services to indian guys as well as us guys Uh, our click for training uh, website you can check it out you will get more details about upcoming batches and uh, all other technical detail course content and everything we can explore this technology in much more detail and i can share my experience daily life daily uh, work experience with all of you and every consultant we hire for training goes through the rigorous check for teaching appetite and on site exposure we train them we provide the assistance in the placement we try to we help them in uh, even on site opportunity in august so friends this is all about uh, the quick introduction about hadoop thank you